Hey Maker, welcome to the Snapseed Photo Editing for Product Photography 6 video series. This is video two. This is a six part video series, so you can easily access all the videos in one location by clicking the link over here or by grabbing it in the description below. If this is your first time joining me, my name is Christina Nicole, and I'm a product photography coach teaching makers like you how to take your own high quality product photos that actually attract more customers and make more sales for your product based business. If you're ready to have a little more creative control when it comes to editing your product photos, this video is for you. In this video, video number two, you are going to learn how to use Snapseed's Pro Tools for advanced editing. Let's go. Tap tools in the bottom center. And the first tool we're going to look at is the curves tool. Similar to tune image, curves controls brightness, contrast, highlights, and shadows. The diagonal line is often referred to as the contrast curve. And you can place additional pins along this line and manipulate the shape of the line to make tonal adjustments to dark and light areas of the image. The benefit of adjusting brightness in curves instead of tune image is you can control how much effect overall brightness actually has on the shadows. It also gives you more control over the midtones. That's why this is considered a pro tool. So the top right hand corner of the line is going to be for our highlights which is gonna be the lighter tones in the image. Lifting the curve up above the default line will increase the brightness. But if you notice, it also kind of puts, especially if they go real far up, it's gonna put like this white haze over some of our darker tones. So as we're increasing this, we wanna make sure that we aren't blowing out any detail like we are here on the left side of that jar and on the actual product itself. So we're not going to increase it too much because I had a pretty good exposure to begin with straight from the camera. I'm just going to do it a little bit. And then typically anytime we were, you know, increase those lighter tones, we want to add a dot to the line down here. And we're just going to bring some of those darker tones back down to true, true color there. Now you can click a little, you know, dot in the middle. This is going to be your mid-tones. This is good. If you go up, it's going to kind of decrease the contrast. You go down, it's going to increase the contrast. I think that's a pretty, pretty good spot right there. Now, if you want to get super advanced, you can tap this circle here. And you could just correct the red, green, or blue colors in the image. But this is a very advanced option. You turn the eyeball off. It's going to get rid of our histogram and curve line. And then the little like paint swatches to the right here, these are actually already like pre-done kind of filters. We don't want to mess with those. Keep control of the edits you are making. And when you're done, you're going to hit the check mark. Now we're going to go back into tools. And this time we're going to look at the brush tool. So with the brush tool, the swipe of your fingertip, or you can use a stylus, becomes a brush for advanced editing. You have a dodge and burn option. You have an exposure option, a temperature option, and a saturation option. So with dodge and burn, you can selectively lighten or darken areas of the image. The burn tool allows you to darken areas of your image, and the dodge tool allows you to lighten areas of your image. So right now, we were to rub our finger over and you can flip the eye on to see where you're making the edits, toggle on and off, 
at a plus 10, it's going to lighten. So it's activating the dodge tool. Now, if we hit the downward arrow, it's going to take us to a plus five, which is going to be a little lighter. And then, of course, we can erase everything. If we go down to a negative five, we're going to start entering into the burn tool where we can darken a portion of the image. And if we go to a 10, it's going to get even darker. Now, the longer you rub your finger in one spot, the darker or lighter it's going to continue to get. I personally don't use the dodge or burn tool very often. Erase all that. What I like to do, click the brush. What I like to do is click the brush again. I like to jump over to exposure. So this allows me to selectively increase or decrease the exposure of a selected area. So this is considered kind of a pro tool because it allows you to do some selective editing here. So plus seven. Now this one doesn't get you know, lighter the more that you rub on it. And this is just going to be one value. So there's a plus seven. We go to plus one. You'll see where it lightens even more. And you'll see how the spread is darker. Of course, we can go down to erase. You also have a 0.3 option. So you can only utilize. So then 0.7 and one. You see the variation there go down and erase all of it. And we can also go negative, meaning we can make it darker. So we have a negative three, negative seven, and a negative one. Look at the effects there. So just get in here and, and play with this. And the way that it's beneficial is because you'll notice in this image, we have the presence of more light on the left than we do on the right. So our light's uneven in this photo. So what I could do is I could jump that exposure to a 0.3. And I could go ahead and run my finger over, over the image and increase the brightness on the right-hand side. Maybe it doesn't seem like enough. I'll go in and I can do a plus seven. It seems to be a little too much, but maybe I can add a plus three to kind of this side. You got to be careful, you know, with, with the spread. So that's over the whole thing. Let's go ahead and erase. But maybe the plus three was probably the best, most realistic option for getting us closer to an even, even light throughout. So Snapseed doesn't have a background removal tool. That is one of its limitations, but you can kind of use the brush tool similarly. So if we go to exposure, maybe we want to increase the overall exposure of this photo, including the product by a 0.3. But when we toggle that off, our background still looks a little grayish, kind of dingy. So I'm going to increase this exposure to a plus one. And we're going to stay zoomed out. We're going to get as close as possible to the product. Which you'll see here. Just brushing our finger over. We're going to turn the little dot on. We can see like where we're at, how close we've gotten. Now, the further zoomed out you are, the larger the spread of the brush. So as we zoom in, our brush line is going to get a little tighter. And we're just going to rub our finger up this line. And toggle on and off to see if you're getting you know, close enough. Now, this does take a lot of work. So my suggestion to you is always start with a wonderful light setup. If you struggle to use natural light, natural light is free. It's a wonderful, but a lot of times makers struggle to use natural light. If you struggle to use natural light, I highly suggest joining my five-day challenge called Light. And inside of Light, I teach you the cure for not having enough light. I teach you the cure for harsh light with hard-defined shadows. 
I teach you the cure for uneven light, for reflections, and for your product not being true to color. And the challenge only happens twice a year. So you can go and click the link in the right hand corner to get on the wait list. Or you can snag the link in the description below this video. Okay, so you'll see we've got some edging here, but if we toggle on and off, we're not going to see a lot of this. We really just, we want to be careful to not make sure we're not overexposing the product at all. So we're just getting in there nice and close. We zoom all the way back out, hit the eyeball, and now we've got this perfect studio shot on white. So this is a great workaround if you need to do those studio shots on white. If you click the brush again, you also have the option to, you know, selectively edit the temperature and the saturation. I, I rarely touch those. So once we're done, we're going to hit the check mark. We're going to go back to tools. And the next tool we're going to look at is the selective tool. So the selective tool allows you to make precise selections and enhancements to specific areas of an image within seconds. So you'll see at the bottom, we have a little plus sign highlighted. What you're going to do is wherever you want to make an edit, you're going to tap the plus sign. So again, this image, the right side's a little darker than the left side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, you know, move left and right and right, right is going now. See how I just tap the screen and the, the B is now white, not blue. I can't do anything. So tap that again, right's going to increase brightness and left is going to decrease brightness. So I can selectively edit this area. Now, if I take my fingers and kind of do a zoom motion on my screen, if I zoom in, you'll notice that I can make the area that I'm editing smaller. Or if I zoom out, I can make it bigger. Okay, that's super cool. So we have the option to selectively edit brightness. We can also do contrast, saturation, and structure. Okay, so this allows us to selectively edit those things. If I hit the plus sign at the bottom and it highlights blue, I can add another dot to the screen. So maybe on the left side, I actually want to increase my contrast a little bit. Now, if I want to make edits, again, to make an edit to a specific one, I do have to tap it and have it be blue. When you have what you want, all you have to do is a check mark and you're done. Go back to the tools in the center. And the last tool we're going to look at is the healing tool. The healing tool is kind of like the clone tool in Photoshop or Affinity Photo. And what it's going to do is it allows us to simply brush or tap unwanted spots to potentially make them disappear. Let's zoom in and see if we can find something. I'll just use this as an example. Let's say that I want to get rid of one of those bubbles, which you wouldn't want to do, but I'm not sure that there's really anything else. I don't even have like a little hot spot for my light that I could mess with. So let's say, or let's just say we want to get rid of this little black spot in the center. I can just tap the screen and it goes away. There's also an undo option at the bottom. I could rub. Now, what it does is it pulls from another portion of the image. So sometimes, let's see here. Let's say I wanted to get rid of the period. But if I were to rub over the period like that, see how it does it kind of wonky? So I can hit the undo button. Sometimes zooming in helps. Sometimes just tapping helps. It's still pulled kind of funny. So sometimes you just have to go back and forth, back and forth and try, you know, different things, tap it a few times. And there by tapping, you know, four or five times in small little taps, we were able to remove that without it pulling from the O at all. So this one can be a little wonky. 
you do have to play with it sometimes to make sure that you're not like, you know, smudging or pulling weird designs. But play with it. I mean, sometimes when I'm playing with it, I do have to, you know, tap or swipe and then undo like 10 or 15 times. Like I said, zooming, different zooms are going to create different effects. The way that you tap is going to create different effects. So sometimes you're going to get some wonky results. Just keep keep trying. I will say, too, that, you know, smaller imperfections that you're trying to get rid of are much easier than, you know, trying to remove like an entire person with a tool like this inside of a free app. And those are the pro tools inside of Snapseed. In video three, you are going to learn all about Snapseed's non-destructive editing and edit stacks. These two features really set Snapseed apart from its competition. Please take the time to like this video if you found it useful. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you want to learn more about taking your own high quality product photos. See you next time.